hi so today I'm going to explain you about neural networks and uh, using the R software using R studio I will be explaining how to fit a neural network model in R so I hope you have a basic understandings of using R and uh, also basic understanding of what is the neural network and this video is for someone who wants to know that how to plot a neural network in R or how to fit a training how to fit a model neural network model to the training data set how to predict for the test data set given these things let's begin so let's import the two libraries mass and neural net library mass control enter library neural net control enter set the seed so that each time you run the neural networks you get the same results so set dot seed one two three any number you can put in inside and then control enter so boston is a data set which is uh, given inside the package mass and uh, you can have a look on what is boston data set how it looks like so you just uh, see here it has 14 variables and uh, 506 observations or rows so 506 rows and 14 variables out of 14 there is one variable which is target variable which we want to predict so here we can see the column names uh, like Krim, Zidin, Indus, Cas, Nox, RM so we don't get the meaning of what these each of these variables are so you can get here the meanings of the each of these variables write help quote Boston you check here on the right hand side you see the housing values in the suburbs of Boston the Boston data frame has 506 rows and 14 columns so given this usage Boston and you have the data frame crime means per capita crime rate Zidin you can see here so these are these 13 variables 14 variables P ratio is pupil teacher ratio by town and we want to predict med V median value of owner occupied homes means uh, it's like value of homes as a function of rest of these 13 variables this is weighted mean of distances to five Boston employment centers means average distance to employment centers and uh, RM means number of rooms per dwelling yeah. so these are 13 variables you can have a look on them what's the meaning of each of these variables but the main thing is that you want to predict the med V as a function of the rest of the 13 variables data set is uh, small not not quite large it is 506 observations fit a training model uh, it will the time take will be very less so let's have a look on the data frame each of the variable is a numeric and integer type let's have a look on the prior target variable which we want to predict say data frame dollar mid v here on the right hand side you see the histogram is going from 10 to 50 I uh, mean something like uh, 5 to 50 or something and you see that the distribution of the data points of this uh, value mid v means median value of this house is a uh, little left skewed and that means the most of the values are between 10 to 25 and very few values are between 30 to 50 let's have a look on the dimension of this data frame again we already know that the data has 506 observations and 14 columns so let's have a look on the three first three rows it looks like this let's have a look on the range of each of the columns so range means min and max values so we need to scale of each of these variables so that they have uh, the scale between 0 to 1 so all of those uh, are having range between 0 to 1 let's do the scaling using this code this max value is min value and this data frame what is max value so max value 
you we are using the function apply on data frame on each of the column two is for column and max is for max of the of each of the column so like crim we get 0 0.00632 that is the min value that uh, right uh, no no here you can see the max value if you want to see you see here yeah so max value is cream 88.9 zn is 100 index is 27.7 like this you can also find the mean value and these are mean values minimum values now you have to scale it down like this using this code center at the minim minimum value of each of the column values and the scale is min max scaling max value minus min value so this is a we are writing as dot data of dot frame because a scale function does a scale the min max scaling but the thing is it converts into the matrix so we need to convert into the data frame so let's do it don't do twice this is scaling because it will hurt the training and it may create a problem during that so now let's divide the data set into the training and the test data set so we are just taking a sample of uh, 400 rows out of uh, 506 rows so training data frame will be data frame and all those indices minus indices means uh, all these excluding all these 400 rows we are taking in the test data frame so plus indices all the train data frame minus indices all the test data frame rows so test data frame has 106 observations and train has 400 observations so what we did is we took the data frame and divided into the train and the test data frame now we will fit the model on the test data, uh, train data and then try to predict the test data frame mid v values and try to see how it matches with the actual values of the mid v and then try to compare those values and see what will be the mean squared error and how good the neural network is working on this so let's do fitting now oh, so neural net is the function which we use for fitting a model and we are doing so let's do all bars all bars is all the column names here yeah, predictive bars it will give all the column names except the med v which is the target variable and then we are again writing this code just for adding to give it plus and then we are writing form as that formula get it like this so this is a code as dot formula for writing in something like this i hope you know about this thing so we cannot write like this med v tilde dot because this function neural net does not accept that so that's why we need to write it in this way because we need to write but this is better way because uh, you can write any number of uh, say we are 13 maybe when you have maybe 100 columns then if you want to choose any 30 columns out of them then you can just find the predictive wires and then put those predictive bar here you get the formula for this so instead of writing 50 times or 100 times like med v tilde cream plus zn plus this typing all this you just have to write a simple code of like this just find the predictive variables which you want to fit and then put it here so now uh, fitting the neural net model so we have two hidden layers and the number of hidden units in second layer is four and in third layer is 2 so we are using the configuration 13 4 2 1 that means 13 is the predictive variables there are 13 predictor variables 4 is the 4 is the hidden unit in the second layer 
and two is the number of hidden units in the third layer and fourth is the output which we want to predict that is the mid mid v median where uh, median value of the house so 13 variables are there so let's check it out data is trained data frame on which we want to fit the model so let's do so it has converged now let's plot it so here we can see yeah so we can see here these are 13 variables frame z in on all those and this is the predictor variable med v on the right hand side so first layer has all the predictor variables and the last layer has the target variable these blue lines are the bias terms and these lines are the weights this is the second layer this is the third layer the third layer has two units second layer has four unit and first layer will always have the number of predictor variables which you you have chosen for fitting the training model and the last is having the target variables so how this neural network works you already know but i will just give a glimpse on uh, just to remind so mid v will come out like this 0 0.6716 so mid v is equal to bias term that is 0 0.677 plus 0 0.396 times this hidden unit minus 1.66 times this again med v is equal to bias term this is 0 0.677 plus 0 0.39694 times this variable this value will come up from here plus minus 1.68 times this this will come from here how so this will come from these four units and this bias term so this will be equal to minus 0 0.775 to 4 bias minus 0 0.2443 times this plus 0 0.94569 times this plus 2.00817 times this plus 1.26 times this so each of these line means these and these are connected by this way so this will be multiplied by this then it will come to this so this is like w naught this is w naught plus w1 x1 w2 x2 so w naught plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2 for this unit is w naught w1 x1 w2 x2 w3 x3 w4 x4 these weights are different so w1 of here will be different so th this will be w11 this will be w you can take different values so that doesn't matter but you need to understand what these weight means and how these are connected so this is neural network so this is the network and this is back propagation algorithm which we use to find the uh, hidden units and then the weights we are trying to optimize to get the mid value they're trying uh, they're trying to get the mid value as close as the actual values so these are the we we just inject the values for each of these variables then we the neural network try to fit in all these weights on in this first between the first layer and the second layer then second and the third layer and third and fourth test out all these weights in such a way that the mid value for each of the row is as close as possible to the actual values so this will be the predicted variable uh, this will be the predicted value of the target variable so i think this is clear for now for the this plotting let's check it out for the testing data set predictions so predict we use the function compute and then this model and then the comma test data frame and then this we are taking all these 13 variables except the 14th one which is the target variable so that is not being used for the predictions that's obvious so predictions this 
and then we are finding the predictions and actual values and we are actually unscaling it so this is the prediction values so this one is the prediction value and this is the unscaling method because before we scaled it and converted now we have to unscale and again the actual values also get unscaled like this you can pause the video maybe sometime in between and you can just note it down um, right so you can find the mean squared error like this sum prediction minus actual values the square and then dividing by the total number of test data of uh, rows so you get the mean squared error here that is quite less it is almost zero so neural network is fitting very well on this data set and its predicted values is almost the same for each of the uh, actual values of the med v let's let's plot the actual values and the predicted values on the right hand side you can check it predicted and the actual values and then fit the line there not do like that so so mean squared error is there and you can just plot and plot function you know how to plot test data frame dollar med v this is the actual values and these are the prediction values you see the almost these are the error between them is almost zero and that is you can see by msc right and also in the diagram you can see that uh, they are following a straight uh, this line of slope one that is 45 degree line so neural network works very well on some data and sometimes it does overfit so in order that this data does not or this model does not overfit you should divide this data set into many parts and then fit uh, the model into all the parts except the one for which you will predict so this is actually the cross validation which I will uh, uh, do in the next few videos and uh, do the cross validation for neural networks in R here I will explain that how to do the cross validation for that and uh, that is helpful because uh, that cross validation will help in uh, understanding for, for the neural networks to understand better the data set so that it knows about each of the uh, part of the data set because right now I'm just taking one part of the data that is which is sampled out for 400 observations this could be anything out of the 506 observations but this is uh, this is one time data and you are fitting the data on this and test data may be may be different from the trained data entirely different so if it is dirty data but so that's why we what we in cross validation what we do is we divide the whole data set into many parts and then do it so let, uh, i will just discuss that thing in the next uh, videos so thank you for watching yeah bye bye